Good evening. Today is Monday, February 18th, 2013, and you're watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa, and today we are outside of Ohm in Germany, ready to board again the Last Express, an adventure game that we're playing through, having a great time. Some really awesome things have happened as far as the mystery and the plot developing. I won't ruin those for you if you haven't seen them yet, but go back and watch the previous episodes if you haven't so you can catch up with the story. We're going to jump on the train this morning and see what's going on before breakfast. Okay, if you remember from the last episode, we had a nightmare because we slept in this bed where we had unfortunately hidden the dead body of a passenger. So first of all, let's go Bonjour, monsieur. and see Milos. what's Milos. happening. are giggling and not much is happening in this car but oh here comes the conductor excuse me monsieur let's see if he's going to go say, say say anything interesting bonjour monsieur est-ce que vous allez trouver un passe partout no Vous avez perdu votre clé Hier soir, pendant la crise du comte Obolanski, elle est peut-être tombée de ma poche pendant la confusion. Cette clé ouvre toutes les portes du train. Je ne voudrais pas paraître suspicieux, mais est-il possible que l'un des passagers vous l'ait volé C'est difficile à croire. Enfin, qui Peut-être l'Américain. Il a l'air d'un fauteur de trouble. Je l'ai souvent vu traîner dans le couloir. Le docteur Il était là, hier soir, dans le compartiment du comte Obolanski. Il y avait tant de monde, il aurait pu profiter de la confusion pour vous la voler. Il n'y avait pas tant de monde. Juste Madame Wolf et Mademoiselle Tatiana. De toute façon, la clé a disparu. Soyez attentifs. Très bien, monsieur. So, another plot development. Last night, when we were in the room with the Russian grandfather, while he was having a fit and we were administering to him the master key was taken out of the train master's pocket. And that is most interesting. Who's at breakfast? Oh, good morning, Mr. Schmidt. Good morning, Herr Schmidt. I hope all that shouting didn't wake you up last night. Shouting? What shouting? Guess not. <laughs> And no one else is here except for. Good morning. How is your grandfather? He's sleeping. Good. Don't forget the tea. I want. I. I want to thank you for what you did. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been there. Has he been ill for long? I don't know. I've been living in France. Grandfather came to bring me home to Russia. I knew he wasn't well, but. I have written out your poem. Thank you, Tatiana. Excuse me. К вашему сведению, после нанесенного вами оскорбления с дедушкой случился приступ. По-моему, вы горды тем, что причинили мучение старику. If Vasily Alexandrovich suffers, it's because of his own guilty conscience. I only spoke the truth. How dare you! Вот мазать Татьяна. Талец творяется на обмены присущую вашему классу. Вы сами выходите из того же класса. Я? Вряд ли. Во всяком случае, это несущественно. Я посвятил свою жизнь строительству бесклассового общества. Значит, дедушка был прав? Вы в самом деле либерал? Я думал, что за четыре года пребывания в Париже вы хоть чему-нибудь научились. 
Видать, буржуазная система образования готовит девушек лишь для замужества, и вы наверняка были надежно защищены от всего даже отдаленной принимающей идеи. Алексей, зачем вы так говорите? В детстве мы каждый день играли у реки. Неужели вы забыли? Я помню. That time no longer exists. Good day. Well, that's just sad. They used to play together, and that's the best he can do for her? How rude. So, continuing with the development of uh, Tatiana here, and Alexei, and the grandfather, who had a difficult time. There are the ladies having some tea. What were you writing all morning? Just my diary. I thought you were a novel. You were writing such a long time. Oh, well, what's this? When can I read it? You want to read my diary? Of course. Unless it's a secret. I will. It is, rather. No one's ever asked me before. I, I don't know what to say. I'm just teasing you. It was just to see the look on your face. Really? Sophie. You were really funny. You would have thought I was asking you to borrow money. <laughs> Sophie is... <laughs> amuses herself. So did you see here that there's a beetle? Huh. Keep that in mind. I don't particularly want a beetle right now, but let's see. And actually... So he lost a black beetle. Hmm. Let's keep that in mind as well, too. Friendly gentleman. But that Are means that but of course, Milos may be alone in his compartment. Milos is the gentleman who tried to disembowel us a couple episodes ago, if you remember, with a knife. Let's see if he's friendlier this time around. Come in. Milos. We need to talk. Pazi, what's the now, Rojan? August Schmidt thinks I'm Tyler. I went along with it to keep the game going. Now I want to know what the game is. Emo, nisha da mu govoriš. On je bre ženo, Tyrov prijatelj. Tebi je svako prijatelj. Kamaj, sit down. Have you heard of unity or death? Sure. That's Harvard's motto. Where is it at the post office? Unity or death is a sacred vow. Crna ruka. We have all taken it. Tyler, too. He always liked that sort of thing. He gave his life for this. Tyler came to us in the winter. We were hiding in the mountains of Bjelašnica, north of Sarajevo. When Tyler came, he had no food, no guns, nothing. Tyler brought us guns. What did Tyler want from August Schmidt? Tyler was given a mission by the general himself. It was a great treasure that belonged to the Serbian people. What was it? It was called the Firebird. I never saw it. Tyler was to sell it for gold to buy the guns from the German. If the German finds out that we have lost the gold, everything is lost. You must tell him that we have the gold and that we want to buy the guns. Why should I help you cheat August Schmidt? Cheat him? How can you speak of cheating a German? The Germans are taking our land, the food from our children. We are like slaves in our own land. Tyler understood this. If you betray us, you betray the cause he died for. It's your cause, not mine. Oh, by the way, Herr Schmidt mentioned that he was having some merchandise put on the train at Munich. So long, madame. He's volley. Uh, pardon me. I would love to know what I don't know what he's doing. But um interesting thing to note here is that they're talking about the firebird. So that is what we had here in our compartment. I'll show you again. There you are, monsieur. Thank you. And this compartment is what we were carrying, which obviously is the Firebird, which we were going to sell to Kronos to find out, to get gold, and then give that gold 
to August Schmidt. So now the Firebird is missing, and this little extra piece here is missing, and so we need to figure out how to get that Firebird back. That's the number one uh, priority here. So, hmm. We also have a translation of... Here we go. The Firebird Translation. I'll just read the first paragraph. Every night in a far-off land, the Firebird stole, go stole golden... <laughs> I'll read it if I had learned how to read. Let's try that again. Every night in a far-off land, the Firebird stole golden apples from the royal garden. The old king said to Prince Ivan, Go speak with the Grey Wolf and bring the Firebird to me, for I must hear him sing. Very interesting. Now, if you guys remember uh, an episode ago, Tyler, in our dream, woke up and showed us an egg and said, why don't you make it sing? Hmm. This is very, very interesting. Oh, and also, let me go back and show you some of that, some more of that, uh, real quickly. So you can read it. Uh, let's see, does it go on? Yeah, it does. So I'm putting this up on screen so that those of you who are interested can read the entire thing. Uh, and then we have a quick thing to do here before we get to Munich. That's pretty important. And I love how uh, Francois spends a lot of time in the harem girls' apartments. If you can just barely hear that. I think they're speaking French, not Arabic, though. Bonjour, monsieur. Okay, so we have, uh, we now know what we need. Let's go in and bluff the heck out of this Kronos dude. Are you still here? Tell His Excellency I'd like to, tell him I want to talk to him about the Firebird. The American, Your Excellency. I believe this time you want to speak to him. Yes. Yeah. I love she just shuts the door in her face. <laughs> I'm in. Make yourself comfortable. Why, thank you, Kahina. I think I will. Good morning, Mr. Ka. I hope you have good news for me today. That depends. Do you still want the Firebird? Do you have it? What happened to Tyler? The misadventures of Mr. Whitney and his colleagues are of no interest to me. Let us conclude this transaction quickly. We both have many other things to do. I with my collection, and you with your travels and special interests. Your treatment of Vasily Alexandrovich, for example. <sighs> Datura Stramonio. Very interesting. It's very simple. Simple to us, perhaps. But few European doctors would have thought of it. Once in Nigeria, but I digress. Do you have the Firebird? Not technically. Then I shall waste no more of your time. I shall look forward to our next meeting, Mr. Khan. So Kronos wants the Firebird. Let's see if we can see anything here. Oh, this is interesting. What's he got here? He knows nothing. It is as I thought. The Austrian woman has the Firebird. Forgive me, Your Excellency. I told you so last night. Why have you not searched her compartment? The compartment is guarded, Your Excellency, day and night. Ah, yes. The dog. I am not afraid, Your Excellency. But if I enter the compartment, that dog will attack me. If Your Excellency wishes, of course. I understand, Kahina. Several hours remain before Vienna. I will arrange a convenient absence for Miss Wolf and this animal whose presence seems to make you so uneasy. Then, Kahina, you will find the Firebird. Yes, Your Excellency. So I was just having him go around and do a little bit of snooping. That's extremely freaking interesting right there. Kronos is a weird, weird dude. 
Let's take a look at some of his art. Also, the book that I picked up is extremely important for you to go back and read if you're interested in some of the background of the story, because it explains why Kronos wants this firebird. It is the story behind the firebird. So, and he was very unwise, as I can tell you to leave us alone in here. I think that's all we can see. We might be able to see a close-up of this artwork. Yeah. Does anyone know who did this artwork? I'd like to know if you know in the comments. If you are a particular uh, connoisseur of that art work, I'd like to know about that. So, Kronos is going Kronos to arrange here? something. Hmm. And isn't it? Uh, pardon me. Le train entre en gare de Munich. Munich. 20 minutes arrêt. Munich. Le train entre en gare de Munich. Munich. 20 minutes arrêt. Munich. Munich. Herr Whitney, soon we will arrive in München. Are you ready to proceed with our agreement? The answer is yes, Herr Schmidt. Our deal is on. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Orient Express is now leaving for Vienna, Budapest. Bitte sehr vorsichtig sein mit diesem großen Koffer. Wir darf um Gottes Willen nicht hinfallen. Meine Damen und Herren, der Orient Express fährt jetzt in Richtung Wien, Budapest, Belgrad und Konstantinopel ab. Bitte alle einsteigen. Ja, die Schule ist doch keine gute Straße. Okay. So here we sit in the salon after arriving in Munich. And uh, just to give you a little ex quick explanation of that, it's now noon on July 25th, 1914 on the Orient Express. And we have seen Herr Schmidt uh, bring the gold onto, I mean, bring the package onto the, the uh, train. We have talked turkey with Kronos and found out that uh, he is a deeply disturbed dude. Um, <laughs> and uh, we've noticed that little Francois wants that beetle and we might be able to trade him that beetle for that whistle that he has, which may be of a particular interest to us. But I'm gonna end this episode here. We're gonna go on in the next episode from Munich to Vienna and actually you know let me think about this for a second because I think there's one more important thing we can do in this episode and that is see if we can get that beetle from I mean that uh, whistle from Francois let's first of all let's see if the whistle is of interest to us but I have a feeling and we just need to catch him oh there he is but we can't grab him. So I'll do that in the next episode. As he is being a wily little bugger. Okay, so we'll do that in the next episode. We'll get from Munich to Vienna and um, continue on with the story, figuring out if we can find a way to hoodwink August Schmidt for his guns, uh, find the Firebird, whoever has taken it. We have a high... We suspect, remember, that Anna the violinist asked Tatiana to hold something for her. So that's very important for us to be able to figure out what's going on with that. And Tatiana is conveniently ensconced in the smoking lounge, so we might be able to look around her compartment. Um, and then we also need to figure out how to hoodwink uh, Kronos as well, too. So all of that in the next episode. If you enjoyed what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button below and encourage me. It really does encourage me. And if you loved what you saw, then please join the party and subscribe. And I'll see you as we head on to Vienna on the Orient Express in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching.